Hello Indie Game Fan, in conjunction with the release of Scorn and Spooky Season, GOG is having a go weekend sale, so here are my picks, beginning with Valfaris, the all-action run-and-gun title that has you going on a rampage on the titular fortress planet, seeking revenge against your father. I absolutely love the action in this, with a huge variety of upgradable weapons to keep the action fresh, being one of my personal favourites and is not to be missed. Fools rush in. You know this expression, Igor? I'm looking for someone. Perhaps you've heard her name. Tatiana. Tatiana Amelieva. One of the more impressive survival horror first-person shooters is Chernobylite, one that may be a little bit on the nose at this point in time since it is set in a fictional representation of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster exclusion zone, but taking broader game history into context, is similar to games like Stalker in Influence. It's a first-person shooter where you have to gather ingredients and to craft items where there is a base building element as well as companions which you can recruit and direct on missions, released out of early access last year but is still being supported with free updates and DLC. I'm sorry, Igor. It's over. You need to accept it and move on. It makes a sociopath upset. Look, I came here to find Tatiana. That's what matters to me. This is an automated warning message. You are approaching the event horizon of the Jovian anomaly, codename Jupiter Hell. Hostile incursion reported. Designation unnatural. Human targets zero. Eliminate hostiles on site. If you love traditional turn-based roguelikes, Jupiter Hell will be a title of interest, being a sci-fi horror entry set on the moons of Jupiter, where a lone space marine faces off against demonic forces. If that story setup seems familiar, this is because the developer of this game also made the fan game Doom Roguelike way back in the day, where this original IP version takes lessons from that and refines it into its best version. Near infinite. Fight. Die. Try again. I just talked about Mother Russia Bleeds in a recent video covering the best beat-em-ups, where this is a bloody and gory entry that is great with some friends, although you must have the stomach for the ultra-violence in this game. You play as street fighters who are experimented upon with a new drug, giving them unmatched brutal strength at the expense of crippling addiction, but they now fight against the system in order to get revenge. Of the boomer shooters currently in early access, Prot is one of the most promising, having a very distinct brown colour palette which is intentional, being set in Czechoslovakia in 1986, where defending your homeland from strange invading enemies. I love how this developer has nailed the visual style of a 90s shooter, but the gunplay and action is impressive as well, but do note that it is still in early access, but it's already pretty great. A game from 2020 that people absolutely adored is Carrion, where I wouldn't go so far as to say that for myself, but I do like this game, not least because of the pixel art and fire effects. It self-describes as a reverse horror game where you play as a tentacled monster, hunting down innocent scientists and fighting off military backup, but justifiably so since the creature was captured and imprisoned in the first place. It does have more puzzle elements than you might think and the lack of a map was a common frustration, but I did like this game that year.
Of the recent wave of boomer shooters, Dusk is perhaps the most successful, coming to us from publisher New Blood Interactive, who have carved out a niche in this genre. You are fighting against a cult and even more sinister forces, with a whole bunch of weapons at your disposal which provides plenty of variety. It does have an episode-based structure just like the games from the 90s and absolutely nails that nostalgia while still bringing this into the modern era. Inhuman, relentless, unstoppable. You have only one purpose. Murder. One of the more underrated games on the list is Butcher, the game that developer Phobia Game Studio made before making Carrion in 2020, being a minimalist but no less brutal action platformer where you play as a cyborg sent to Earth to eradicate what's left of humanity. In many ways, this is essentially Hotline Miami but as a platformer, where the time to kill is short. And you can get one-shotted rather easily, but that is where the fun lies with the instant reset as you try again and again and again, being an absolute steal at this price, so get it if you have not. Terminate them. I'm not usually one for horror games, but I do have to give Darkwood its props, one that uses a top-down camera which you might think is not scary, but the use of lighting and line of sight, as well as the foreboding atmosphere created might just make you poop your pants. It's a survival title where you're exploring and scavenging in the day, retreating and hunkering down at your hideout at night, having to take on whatever horrors come your way. It is super creepy as well, and it's always one to bust out during October, so dim the lights and get spooked with this. And of course, a no-brainer title that I adore is Blasphemous due to the high-bit pixel art, especially how it is used in portraying blood and gore, not what you would expect from a pixel art game which makes it even more impressive. With this release, four major free updates and its content complete, so play this and look forward to the sequel where you can feast your eyes on more pixel art here.